Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros, and today we're going to be building the ultimate Dell Optiplex. Will it suck? We don't know, but we're going to figure it out today. But first, a word from today's sponsor. As a creator, creating content is almost second nature. Once the idea hits my mind, I almost go into autopilot, doing scripting, recording, and editing until it's complete. However, getting it seen on the crowded space that is YouTube is a whole other challenge. With TubeBuddy though, you get access to a wide range of tools like tag optimizers and search ranking results to help you optimize your content to succeed on YouTube. Want to give it a shot? Click the link down below to learn more. So a little disclaimer before we get into this video, this is a second gen Optiplex 390. So we're basically doing like the best case scenario upgrade that we can do for second gen. So it's not gonna be like the best Optiplex ever, but for this generation and the price, it is going to be the best. Now, is it gonna deliver the best price performance? Probably not, hence why this video is not titled a certain budget. We went with a graphics card from NVIDIA, the 1650 Super that we're gonna be using in another PC build. And also we're upgrading it with a power supply and a 500 gigabyte SSD and tossing in a Xeon that we bought off eBay. So we're approaching like new build territory price range after all these upgrades. So if you factor in maybe getting one of these for free, it might be a viable option. But if you're paying like close to $100 for an Optiplex, it may not be worth doing. But again, proof of concept, we just wanna see exactly how we can push this thing um, and see what kind of performance we can get. So how about we go ahead and talk about each part and how it's going to upgrade this Dell Optiplex. All right guys, so the first upgrade we're gonna be doing is this Xeon right here. This is an E3 1230. This is not a V2 or V3, this is the original E3 1230. And the main thing that you wanna upgrade with these Optiplexes is the processor because it comes with something like an i3 or an i5, which is kind of viable, but this E3 1230 is a four core eight threaded processor Processor that has one disadvantage to it. It does not have integrated graphics, which for a system like this doesn't matter. And it's significantly cheaper, sometimes 20 or 30 bucks cheaper than the i7 2600, um, but performs about the same. So this is a really good price performance option to upgrade something like these Dell Optiplexes. And of course, we are gonna be upgrading this Dell Optiplex with more RAM. These are two eight gigabyte sticks. We're gonna be putting in 16 gigabytes of RAM into this PC. That's pretty viable for a gaming PC nowadays. And if you wanna stretch into doing something else, like a little bit of video editing and whatnot, you know, you have more RAM to be able to do that. So as we mentioned earlier, we're putting a 1650 Super into this PC. This is from MSI. And honestly, the 1650 for the price versus performance is a really good card. I think we actually paid a little bit less than this, but so this is basically like, 588 gig, 1066 gig level, but you're getting a brand new card that actually pulls less wattage, is quieter, and overall just a better card. For the power supply, we have an EVGA B stock 600 watt power supply. This is one of those like in one power supplies where it's really basic, but you can get these really cheap. They're usually under $30 on B stock, but we're actually gonna leave in the description down below some other options that you can easily get off of Amazon or Newegg. Um, but if you do wanna check out B stock, especially on like Wednesdays and stuff, you can find some of these for really cheap. So the SSD here, uh, don't ask about this, you know, it's just, it's, we're gonna hide it, but this is a 500 gig, I think silicon power SSD or something along those lines. Um, just a really basic SSD. We always like to get the cheap ones because, well, we really haven't had any issues with, you know, expensive versus cheap SSDs, but we'll leave some in the description down below that are alternatives to this one. This is a basic boot drive that we use for Intel systems. So as far as this 390 goes, the main things that we're gonna be reusing in this system is, of course, the case. We'll be probably using the hard drive as like a boot drive. We're gonna be reusing the cooler and motherboard board. Um, we'll be swapping out this RAM, but a lot of times these do come with RAM. This was 8 gigs that was in here, but we wanted to go to 16. Uh, this power supply actually does support up to, looks like 265 watts. So if you do want to go for some upgrades, this can, definitely can handle a better um, graphics card and a slightly better CPU without needing to be upgraded, but you know, we still recommend doing it. So you know what? I think it's time that we go ahead and get into this. Let's do Let's it. Dive right in, shall we? All right, guys, now that we've gone over each individual part, upgrading this Optiplex is actually very simple. All you need to do is unscrew the CPU cooler and install the new CPU of choice. If you did want to save a little bit of money, I want to reiterate that you could buy a Dell Optiplex that doesn't come with a processor at all and end up buying this E3 1230 Xeon and save yourself a good amount of money. You could probably get an Optiplex for around 50 bucks if you do do that. So keep an eye out for those on eBay. We'll leave some links and some searches down below that'll actually help you when you're actually searching for something like this. 
this. Uh, but sliding in the processor is super simple. This motherboard does support the E3 1230 out of the box, no problem whatsoever. The next step is just upgrading that power supply. Again, you could use this with a lower wattage graphics card or something that doesn't require any external power. But in this case, when we're using the 1650 Super, it's just best for us to upgrade this thing with a power supply. So we installed the EVGA 600 watt power supply just by replacing the other one. Super simple to do. And then last but not least is just sliding in the graphics card. Now keep in mind, these Optiplexes have very limited space in terms of how large of a graphics card you could fit in here. So do keep in mind, the one that we did use in this video was definitely small enough to fit in the Optiplex. But if you do go for something that's more of a full size card, you might have a little bit of problems when it comes to installing the graphics card. And you may have to do a little bit of modding to the hard drive cage, which may limit your upgradability in the future to things like another hard drive or another SSD while mounting it properly. Um, but really just keep an eye on that if you do plan on buying another graphics card. But really other than that and upgrading the RAM, it's a super simple upgrade process and we're now ready to test this thing. Now, in terms of testing this thing, well, we ended up testing this PC in a couple of benchmarks. We played games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Fortnite, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Rainbow Six Siege, which represents a good balance of easy to run games and some more difficult games that you could play on a system like this. First up with Call of Duty Modern Warfare, you did have to lower the settings down to like normal 1080p, but this was the first case that we realized that there was going to be a CPU bottleneck throughout the rest of these benchmarks. But really, that is not a horrible thing. The E3 1230, while be it pinged at 100% for pretty much all the time that we were doing some of the testing, really didn't cause the system to slow down all that much. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare, even though the E3 was at 100% usage, we were having no issues playing in really a ton of different maps and ton of different situations and not getting any major lag spikes. Does it look the prettiest? No, it's running on lower settings, but it gets the job done. And the same goes for games like Fortnite. Fortnite was really good to run. You could actually run this on high refresh rate using pro settings, which is an epic view distance and everything else on very low. But you know, it's a budget system. You probably don't want to invest in a 140 hertz monitor for this. But Fortnite was definitely playable. I was easily over 100 FPS most of the time. There are a few stutters here and there that did have to do with that E3 Xeon being the bottleneck. But the 1650 Super is actually very impressive. And if you guys want to see how this 1650 Super fares in a more modern situation, please hit the eye in the top right corner. We actually been benchmark this thing in a Ryzen 5 2600 $500 gaming PC that we built on the channel very recently. But really, there's no complaints when it comes to esports titles like Fortnite and then Rainbow Six Siege. Rainbow Six Siege on high settings performed flawlessly, running through the built-in benchmark, getting well over 100 plus FPS. This would make a really good budget Rainbow Six PC if somebody was looking to get into some, well, esports titles. The same would go with games like CSGO and those other esports games. This thing would be perfect for that. But the one situation where this system started to lack was in a AAA title like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where it is definitely going to struggle if the CPU is a bottleneck, which in this situation, the CPU was again, still the major bottleneck. And we only got an average around 50-ish FPS after doing the built-in benchmark, which was to be expected because this is a very demanding title, even on normal or medium settings. So overall, in terms of performance numbers, I was quite impressed with this PC. This is definitely not a system I would recommend going out of your way to build if you don't have any of the stuff on hand already, but if you do have a Dell Optiplex, it just goes to show you, even in 2020, this old Dell Optiplex that used to run second gen i5s, approaching 10 years old, is really awesome in terms of performance in playing most modern games, if upgraded correctly, and I just really wish the pre-built market would go back to this, being more upgradable, but I understand these companies want to make money and they don't want to make their systems last nearly as long as this 10-year-old Dell Optiplex has, so overall, very impressed. Let's bring Jackson back in here to give his thoughts and uh, wrap this video up real quick. So you guys just saw some really good benchmarking from yours truly over here. Um, but the main thing that you guys noticed was that the CPU was pegged at like 100% almost the whole entire time. But you notice the 1650 really wasn't struggling. So really the only upgrade that we can really recommend at that point is you're gonna have to get a whole new motherboard, whole new processor. And yeah, at that point, why not just build a new computer? But this is like just best case scenario for this Optiplex that actually makes sense. So really, you could go with like a lesser GPU, like a standard 1650, an RX 570 or something like that, and probably get a more balanced system. But I mean, the 1650 Super is not a bad pairing for this Optiplex, especially with that E3 1230. Its clock speeds definitely did hold it back a little bit, uh, but four core eight threaded processors, they're still viable nowadays, but there are a lot of games that really take advantage of six cores and more. Like when we tested Call of Duty Modern Warfare, there were some lag spikes here and there, and the CPU was at 100% usage, so definitely something to keep in mind. But for basically the quote 
quote unquote ultimate Dell Optiplex, we're actually pretty impressed. And this thing is going to be passed along to somebody who's really going to enjoy it. And if you're looking to build a budget system for somebody, this might be a decent option for you. So we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want to actually buy the 1650, please use our link down below because it's an affiliate link and it helps us out. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Too easy, dude.